Franklin County in Florida's Panhandle is the destination for the next episode of Painting and Travel. Sarah travels the waterways and visits nearby Dog Island, while Roger sets up his easel and paints a marshland view. Today, Sarah and I are at the panhandle of Florida. The Gulf of Mexico is right out here, and we're in Franklin County, and I'm standing on the veranda of the Carabelle Boat Club. This is a beautiful view. We were up here last night, and I did a small painting. The light was totally different then. Now we have some morning light, and I'm going to paint this marsh scene. I have an 11 by 14 inch piece of masonite. I have a uh, wash here of burnt sienna on this so I don't have to deal with that stark white on my canvas. For my paints, I'm using titanium white, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and Indian yellow. I'm just going to limit it to those three primary colors, which are three transparent primary colors. There's not very much drawing involved in this painting, so I'm not going to sketch it in with charcoal. I'm just going to use my paints and since really the sky is the least part of the interest of this painting, I'm going to put my horizon up rather high, right up in here. And what I want to feature is this beautiful curve coming around the bend here. And over here to the left, we have some other docks and a few houses. So just a simple drawing to start with. And I want to get this nice curve. I'm going to probably block all this in as one big shape to begin with. And then later on, I'll add some of these patterns of uh, water as they meander through this marsh. I like to start with my dark colors first. So I'm going to mix up ultramarine blue, Indian yellow, and some of the alizarin crimson, just to make a very dark color. And I think the darkest part of my painting here is probably these trees back here and this shadow right underneath these marshes. Uh, naturally, this will be a little bit lighter than the dark here because as things recede in the distance, there's some atmosphere between me and those trees, so it gets a little bit lighter. But I'm going to start out with, a, with this very dark color to begin with. It's a very kind of a neutral color. It's, it's rather warm. Although my eye perceives all these greens over there, I perceive more grays than I do green. So it leans towards green, but these colors are very, are very subtle in this light. And I want these warm undertones to be in this painting before I put these lighter greens over it. That's, that's why I'm making this warm, because if I, if I have these cool greens to begin with, then I'll just put more greens on top of it. If I have this warm undertone here, the warm, red being the opposite of green, when I put the greens over it, it'll make this green sparkle a little bit. It's so important to get the big shapes in first. Many people have trouble with that. They jump right into the details. Uh, but uh, the more I paint, the more I realize that the, these big shapes are the foundation of the painting. It's what I need to establish right off the bat. Now we have these, uh, this marsh here, which is very beautiful. It was so beautiful last night, too. Here's the, here's the painting I did last evening. And as you can see, the light was coming from this way rather than this way. And it just lit up these, this marsh scene. It was just about at sunset. And uh, those buildings in the distance had this beautiful yellow glow to it. And then it, of course, quickly disappeared. All right, well, now let me block in the marsh. Now, as I look at this, the painting is almost eye level with the marsh, so it's very easy for me to, to try and approximate the right value and color of that marsh, because I can look at it here and I can see that it's, uh, see if the color and the value is off. So that's pretty much the right color as I'm, I'm just looking at both my paint and that marsh. I can see I need a little more warmth in there, a little more yellow, and that's, that's pretty good. That's a much the right value and now now then also the benefit of having this burnt sienna on here is I can scumble this around and some of this burnt sienna can show through and just give me another sort of layer of texture and interest 
The, uh, the water is a bit lighter than this marsh color. It's very blue this morning. The reason that is so blue, it's because the sky is so blue. It's really reflecting all this light from the sky. I'll also fill this in just as one large shape. I like to work my whole painting all at once. The only part left here is the sky, so let's put some sky in here. Now it's going to be lighter and very much warmer down here at the horizon. Up at the zenith it gets cooler, so I can very much see that it's warmer down here by the horizon. This, uh, this notion that uh, cool colors always recede, you know, that, that everything in the background needs to be in the bluish range is really a misnomer. It's, it's a, a good general statement, but it doesn't apply to all things. And one of those things is clouds in the sky. Uh, if I were to put clouds in here, the clouds in the foreground would be cooler because they would be brighter and whiter. As they get in the distance, the, those clouds would be much warmer. So uh, the notion that everything in the distance is tends towards the bluish rain is not always true. There are exceptions to that. Well, so far I've been using a three-quarter inch brush here. And I always try to use good brushes. I have a few old brushes with me, but uh, I very much need to get to keep good brushes with me with good points on them. So I'm going to pick up a, another brush, which is a bit smaller, and we'll start going into some of these details. I wanted to see some of the coast from the water, so we'll go on on this charter fishing boat called the Eagle. Glad you could come aboard with us. Captain Chester is going to take us on a tour of Franklin County, the waterways, tell us about the marshes. We've just left a lovely little marina called the Carabelle Boat Club. And we're gonna head out this morning and um, just look at some of the natural beauty of Franklin County. Glad you're here. Good morning. Good morning, welcome aboard. Oh, thanks. What we're going to do is we're going to come out. This is the Carabelle River. We're going to come down the Carabelle River and we're going to go out into St. George Sound and go across to a place that we love very much around here called Dog Island. Dog Island? Dog Island. I know I like it. And I don't get to go out in a boat very often. And that's pretty much the only way to view some of these outer areas. Absolutely. You know, people drive through here and this is a great place. Apalachicola and St. George Island, wonderful places. They, they miss Dog Island because the only way you can get there is by boat. There's no, um, no bridges to it. It's a very unique and eclectic island. Well, as we go out there, maybe you can describe what happens in the marsh uh, in the estuary. I've always heard that that's the birthplace of everything that's healthy for the ocean, the teeniest creatures feeding a little, the next size up and that it's a filter. And that's exactly what it is, and we're very blessed here. We have a great area of turtle grass and manatee grass. It's basically a nursery for big fish. We have grouper and snapper that actually come in here to spawn in the summer, and then their little guys grow out in the grass so they can hide and feed, and it's just the food chain is massive here. So it's probably pretty good fishing? Oh. Great fishing. We have speckled trout. We have uh, lots and lots of redfish, which is a very valuable sport fish. Um, offshore, we have grouper, snapper, king mackerel, Spanish mackerel. We have a cobia run that's getting ready to start. And my buddies have just been catching pompano out here, and pompano is one of the finest eaten fish in Florida. Yes, I've had one, but not recently. Oh, well, well, we'll see if we can get you one here for your stay. Well, let's head on out and you can point out some of these wonderful uh, scenes as we go. Very good. You'll enjoy it. I like seeing the shrimp boats and their catch of the day. It gives me an idea for lunch and probably gives Roger an idea for a future nautical painting. As soon as we pick up speed and I feel the wind blowing my hair and smell the salt air, I begin to relax and forget all my land worries. Dog Island Yacht Club. There it is, the Dog Island Yacht Club. Well, it's adorable. Come on ashore. I've always wanted to come to Dog Island, and it's really nice. I hear the sounds of nature. I can hear, of course, the Gulf of Mexico. It's just down this little pathway. Well, this is a nice place to go shelling, and I'll just quickly show you a few of these that I've found. I see you've collected a couple of cockle shells. We have yes. a couple of zillion for you to take. There are two lighthouses in Franklin County open to the public. The Crooked River Lighthouse in Carabelle 
a skeletal design built in 1895 to replace one on Dog Island that was destroyed by a hurricane in 1873, and the St. George Lighthouse, which was salvaged and reconstructed brick by brick on St. George Island. I guess I'll work with this background first. This is dry, and that, that's really such a, a great advantage of the acrylics. They just, they're dry. Now I can put a glaze over them or put another color over them. Acrylics don't give me that beautiful, buttery, oily feeling uh, that the oil paints do. But uh, I tell you, this is a real good advantage to have this dry already, so I can uh, put in another set of colors over the top of this. Well, I'll take this green color I've mixed up, and I'll put some of this over here. I'm going to put some negative areas in here in a little while to describe these trees, but right now I'm just putting a second layer of color on here. This warmer color that I put on underneath, now I'm starting to lay these lighter green colors over that. Some of that warmth can show through. So right now I have three layers of color I'm, I can work with this. This uh, burnt sienna tone on, that I had on the board to begin with. The second tone of dark, warm colors. Now I'm adding a third layer of these greens. So I'm just building this up a little bit at a time. I've always enjoyed painting marsh scenes. I have painted so many Florida type marsh scenes on rivers. But let me show you a few of them right now. These are a few paintings that I painted some time ago on some of the beautiful rivers around this area in the areas of uh, Florida that Sarah and I have traveled in. Well, I'm going to push something somewhat that I don't see, and I am going to add some more atmosphere with these trees in the far distance here. I am going to put some blue in them just to differentiate these trees here from these over here, because I want these to be kept in separate uh, layers. And if I had used the same green here, it would look like it was on the same plane. So I'm going to make these slightly lighter and slightly bluer because trees, mountains, and objects like that, they, in fact, do get bluer as they go off into the, the distance. In fact, mountains will actually eventually just turn into the color of the sky if they're far enough away. It's a little bit of a guesswork as to these colors because they're so so gray and so subtle. I want a lot of horizontal planes along this marsh. I don't want too many vertical strokes. I want all these planes to be vertical, but I'm painting them as vertical strokes. In other words, I'm not, I don't want to paint too many of these uh, layers of the marsh here with strokes that go this way. I want to paint them this way gives more of a sense of, uh, of the weeds and reeds that make up the marsh. This marsh land back here, I'm going to have that a little grayer, a little bit bluer. Up here, this will be somewhat warmer. These small inlets of water are what is going to make this painting, uh, give this painting some interest. So I think I'll start to drop some of those in there right now. Now these little inlets of water, I'm going to use vertical strokes to create them. And I think I'm going to change the shape of this marsh somewhat. This is always a process of, of constantly building and building. I couldn't do this with oils nearly as easily because this would still be wet. But with the acrylics, I'm getting some nice pure colors over here. I'm getting the color I want in here simply because I'm, I'm, it's not being mixed with this. Right back here is where I want to focus a lot of my attention. Right back here to this small town here of Carabelle, where there's some, a lot of boats and the Carabelle River. Now here is where I'm pushing the values. I don't see, I don't see the water back there as light as I'm going to make it, but that's where I want to direct the eye. So I'm, so one way to direct the eye to a certain area is to have more contrast in that area, more darks against, against lights. And that will bring attention to that area. I'm going to use primarily these vertical strokes to create the water. And then once I get those vertical strokes done, 
Occasionally I'll take my brush and drag it sideways. So it's sort of a double process with me when I paint water. I primarily do these vertical strokes and then I come back and I drag a few lines of horizontal ripples across it. Right at the bottom here, this gets very dark. And that will define the edge of those little pools of water. Now I want a reflection from that water. So before that dries, I want to pull a bit of reflection down into the water. And I'm going to drag my brush horizontally across that. Now right down here, it's going to be very, very dark. So we'll take ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, just make a very dark color there. Right down here is just where the uh, reeds hit the water. So we'll define that as an edge right there. Dry my brush off and just soften this somewhat. Well, here this group of trees here looks like it's just floating in air somewhere. So I think that's the next thing I should deal with. Take my three quarter inch brush again and mix up some bluish green because really what I'm reflecting is these trees. I'll spray my board and let's just these horizontal strokes again. I'm just picking up that green paint as I go with this, this dry brush. Now I think let's jump back into the background and add some of those buildings back there. It's still a little bit early in the day, so I'm going to make those buildings a warm color. So I'm mixing up Indian yellow and white. Just a touch of red in there. And I'll start out with the highlights, the lightest colors. And we'll add a few little buildings in there. So I'll put in the highlights first. And I'm not really trying to pick out individual buildings back there. I'm just trying to give an impression that there are structures in there. And I'm putting the light ones on first. And here again, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm using this idea of, of strong contrast to bring my eye into this area. This is a nice brand new brush, so it has a good point on it. There's a lot of sailboats back there and docks, so I'll just put a small indication of a few masts, just very faintly. I think people will get the idea of what that is. Now with some darker color, we'll put the dark sides of some of those buildings. Again, we'll play up on that contrast of light and dark to bring the eye into this area. And just for fun, let's put the bridge going from Carabelle up to East Point in Apalachicola. We'll just put a hint of that bridge right in here. As long as I have my small brush, I'll continue on and add a little bit of detail into the left side of the painting where all these docks and boats are tied up. And I'll vary the size of these posts. I'll make some lighter and some darker. The marsh way back here in the distance, I want to push that too. So I'm going to get some lighter color. Now, as I said, generally the warmer colors are going to be in the foreground, but if, if the sun, if we have some clouds in the area and the sun is coming over here, it can very easily put a patch of nice patch of sunlight back here in the distance. And even though I don't see it, that's what I'm trying to accomplish here is, is a nice, nice painting by manipulating the light in ways that I know could happen, but uh, aren't necessarily happening right at the moment. What I'm going to do here is just scumble some colors with a sort of a dry brush so I can get rid of that flat layer of paint that I had here to begin with. Remember early on, this was just sort of one big flat area. Now I'm trying to divide that up. And at the same time, I'm trying to leave this as one big shape. I don't want to break it up so much where I have a lot of different shapes going here. 
I want to maintain this big shape, but I want to have the small shapes unified within that large shape. A few small sky holes up here, little negative areas. So I'll mix up my sky color again, and I'll put in just a few little touches of sky popping through those trees. Maybe a few vertical strokes to indicate that there's tree trunks back in there. So what I'm trying to describe here is the some branches and trunks of trees. I don't want to put too much of that in there, but just enough to, again, break up a huge, large shape. I can also see some trees here that are lighter in color. So here I'm putting on a fourth layer of color. So now I'm going even lighter and will indicate a few of the trees in the foreground. So I started with that burnt sienna color. I put in a very dark, warm color. I put this green over it, and now I'm probably finishing up with a, a lighter green, which this is, even though this is dark, it's the lightest green in this, this uh, area of trees. I'm going to mix some more blue. I think I'll just stay with the ultramarine blue and white and put a few patches of water coming right across here. Now in here, there is not much activity with wind or ripple. So this is going to be quite flat in this area because it's very protected. So I can pick up a lot more of the light from the sky because there's no ripples in the water. And that will just make a nice contrast here. And right in the very back here, let's put another highlight of sparkling water. We'll just almost make that pure white. Well, Sarah and I have really enjoyed being here in Franklin County. It's a great place to not only paint, but just to enjoy nature and relax. I'm going to take this painting back to the studio now, put a few more touches on it. I'll show you what I can do to bring this to a finish. Well, we're back in the studio now, and as I look at this, I don't think I have very much to do to finish it, just a few touches. I've put the same colors out on my palette that I had out in the field with the addition of one color, and that is cadmium yellow light. And that will make me some beautiful light greens, which I think I can use right up in this area. This will just give a touch of sunlight way in the distance there which I think might be nice because this really is the center of interest right here. I'm primarily using vertical strokes to indicate this sawgrass. Down here, I'm going to add some warmer colors. Most of this painting is quite gray. That's just why I wanted to punch it up just slightly with some more vivid colors. I think I could use a bit more contrast right in some of these areas here with some ultramarine blue and Indian yellow, just a touch of alizarin crimson, It'll make me a real dark color. I'll spray this again, that will let those wet paints flow over the dry paints more easily. I'll spray that once again, I'll put a few more streaks of water down here. This looks like a lot of space with not much happening. So I believe if I lighten that just slightly, just might break up this area some. Acrylics will dry slightly darker than when they're put on, so I try and keep that in mind. I think maybe the last thing I need to do to this painting is change this dark green back here. It just seems to be a little bit too dark to give it some distance, and it's about the same value and color as this green over here to the left. So if we make this lighter, it may give some more depth to the painting. So I'm going to mix up some ultramarine blue and Indian yellow with some white, and I'm going to spray this lightly and just put a wash over it. One thing always changes another thing when painting, so maybe by making this lighter, it will uh, necessitate this being somewhat lighter, we'll see. I believe I will make that slightly lighter. So I'll mix up some more ultramarine blue and 
some white. I'll spray it again and I'll just put on that faint wash of light blue. That really pushes it in the background. So now what I have is some dark greens here in the middle ground. This is a little further back so it gets a little lighter, a little more atmosphere. And then this is in the distance so we got a lot of atmosphere and a lot of light blues back there. Right in here, I think I'm going to add just a hint of an egret. Put another one right there. Well, I'll put three of them. There we go. I think those few touches will have finished this painting about as far as I can take it. Franklin County has a lot of good places to paint here in Carabelle, it's Apalachicola, St. George Island, and uh, East Point. A lot of materials to paint, a good place to visit. So now I'll finish this by signing it and we'll take one last close look. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.